Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So I'm here today with something that's really cool and exciting for my channel, but also to bring to you guys so you can see it. It's the Panasonic G100, the Panasonic Lumix G100. And this is the new camera I'm gonna be using for my YouTube videos, which is cool. But also, it's a micro 3 fourths camera. It does 4K video at 24 and 30 frames per second. It's got five axis hybrid image stabilization, and it's even got a neat little uh, tripod that you can get that goes along with it if you get like the creator kit that not only allows you to hold it and use it in kind of like in selfie mode, which is ideal for vlogs and stuff, which is kind of what this camera is geared for, but also allows you to activate the shutter for recording, taking pictures and stuff like that. So lots of cool things in here, and we're gonna go ahead and dive in and take a look at it. But before we do that, I do wanna say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, I appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. Now let's take a look at the Lumix G100 by Panasonic. Okay, here we are with the Panasonic Lumix G100. And like I said, this model or this box that I have has the camera in here and you can see it also has a little handheld tripod as well, which is a really nice thing to have with this camera because I mean, it's kind of hold. It's kind of hard to hold the camera and do your vlogging stuff if you've got nothing to hold on to. So this gives you the multifunctionality of not only a hand grip but also a tripod, and then you can press the buttons to start recording or take pictures. Here's the documentation inside the box. Quite a bit to read there. Probably would be helpful for you to look at uh, just so you can learn about the functionality of the camera. Inside here, you can see there's the tripod, and here's the camera itself. Now it's small, it's pretty lightweight. You can see it's got that tiny little lens cap on it, which is kind of neat. It's much smaller than my current camera, which you can see here is the Sony a7 II, which is much older. It's like a 2014 camera and it's only 1080p. So I like now that I'll have this added flexibility to shoot in 4K, even though it is limited to 30 frames per second. Unfortunately, it doesn't do 4K at 60. You can see there that you can easily use the disconnect and take the lens off. And this is one significant upgrade over what you can do with the Sony ZV-1 because it's got a fixed lens. Here you have the rotating screen that you can use. It's the display, it's about a three inch display. You can use that, rotates forward so you can see it while you're doing your recording, which is ultra important, especially if you do a lot of vlogging or content creation style video. Here's the battery, easy peasy. Uh, I have actually been testing out the camera and I've been very happy with the battery life. It lasts a lot longer than the Sony ZV-1, which I had tested out. There's the power brick and the charging cable. So very lucky it comes with both of them. It's not like buying headphones or earbuds or whatever, or an iPhone 12 and it doesn't come with a power brick. Here you've got the leather strap so you can wear it around your neck if you so choose. And then it even has a wrist strap with it as well. So you're covered pretty much however you wanna use this very versatile, lots of good things you can do with this. So let's go ahead and take the little tripod hand grip out of here. You can see there that's adjustable. You can adjust a little screw on the side, which allows you more flexibility. You can move the camera position around for the mount, and then you can press the button to start recording or to take pictures. Very easy to put the battery in. The battery compartment's down here on the bottom. All you have to do is swipe it to the right there, and then you can open it up, drop the battery in, also, this is the same compartment that you use for the SD card slot. So I'm using a SanDisk 128 gigabyte, I think it's a Pro Extreme or something, but perfectly capable of recording at 4K. It's a SDXC card, and this supports various different cards that you can use as well. There's the mount on the bottom, so you can put it on the tripod. And let's go ahead and attach that on there right now, or try to anyway. <laughs> there we go, so very easy to put on here and then you connect it with the cable. So on the side of the camera, you've got the port where you connect it to, which you connect it to the HDMI port on the side. There's the microphone uh, port for there, so you can plug a, a 3.5 millimeter microphone cable in, easy peasy. Over here, you've got the charging port for the micro USB, and then you've got the micro HDMI, you plug it in there, and that's what allows you to control the camera while you've got this connected. And what's nice is you don't have to charge the tripod hand grip, it just operates off of the internal battery on the camera. 
Now we've got all the different dedicated buttons up here. I like it has a dedicated red button on top for the recording than the regular shutter. You've got the different modes that you can use and it has a dedicated on off switch, which I like. It's very nice to know and comforting. You just flip the switch on and off to turn it on and off. You don't have to worry about, let me pop the screen open to turn it on or close it or worrying about whether you left it on. Very straightforward and simple. What's also nice about the touch, well, I gave it away. What's also nice about the display is it is touch sensitive. So you can actually touch it to use some of the features that are available on there. And then you've got the little dial on the right hand side you can use to get to the different menu options and stuff as well. It's actually very versatile and I've been really happy with it. Now I'll go ahead and take the lens cap off. You can see there, you can see some of uh, you know, the video recording capability. Of course, this is not representative of what you're gonna see when you're recording it, but I just wanted to show off the screen there so you can see what it's capable of. It's nice that the screen swivels around, so when you close it up, you can have the plastic back showing so you don't have to worry about scratching up the screen, or you can flip it around. That way you can lock it into place and see what's going on from you know, the rear of the screen without having to look through the, uh, through the viewfinder. Hey everybody, so I'm here today with the Panasonic Lumix G100 and this is a little bit different for me because normally I'm doing this with a phone and not holding a camera in my hand. So this is kind of like a vlogging style camera. It's the answer that Panasonic came up with for the Sony ZV-1, but there are some changes here. For one, you have interchangeable lenses that you can use, so you're not stuck with the same lens for the entire life of your camera. But Pretty cool, you can also get it in a, uh, kind of like a developer content creator's kit. It's got this fancy handle on here with a button. You can press it to start recording, stop, and all that cool stuff. But I just wanted to come out so one, you can hear what it sounds like with the microphone and also kind of get a sense for the autofocus while moving around. And some of the other nice stuff is too because it does have optical image stabilization. So this is just part of the first impressions video. Of course, I will have more coming when it gets to the real review stuff as I test it out more, but I think that this is pretty good so far. All right, so here we are with the Panasonic Lumix G100. You got to see all the cool stuff in the unboxing. Now this is a little bit more intimate discussion about the camera itself. So it's kind of funny, it's got like the world's tiniest little lens cap here, but clearly branded Lumix across the front, easy to use controls on the top, and then on the bottom, one thing I really like about this one upgrade over the ZV-1 is that you can actually take the SD card out when it's mounted on a normal tripod, or if you at least have it mounted on a camera mount. So you should be good to go there. With the ZV-1, you basically have to take the camera off and then pop the compartment over to get the SD card out of the bottom. On here, easy peasy, you can still do it while it's on there, which is one thing I like a lot. I was using the ZV-1, giant pain in the butt. Other things that I like about this versus the ZV-1 is the battery doesn't die in like 20 minutes. I Seriously, I got the ZV-1, I bought it for my wife so she could use it for her YouTube channel. I was using my Sony a7 II, which I'm recording with right now, and yeah, I recorded like two 10 minute videos and it was on like 20% battery. My wife was complaining about it dying all the time. I can record two, three, four videos on this, well over 30, 40 minutes of record time. I don't really have any problems. I usually record two different videos, maybe sometimes three in one day, and then I'll go put it on the charger, no problemo. It's easy to recharge. Over here on the side, there's a little flap. It's got a port for the HDMI out, which it is micro HDMI. You have to have one of those cables. You can connect it to an external monitor or whatever. Then you've got the micro USB, which is what allows it to recharge. Then on the other side, you've got a port here for a 3.5 millimeter jack for the microphone. Works nice, I've got a, a D80 D3 Pro that I connect to it and it seems to be working fine. I've actually recorded several of my latest videos with it and I like it a lot. It's got nice color profile stuff built in. One other thing that's nice about the G100 over the ZV-1 is you can actually take off and get different lenses. So it has interchangeable lenses which give you different types of feature sets if you're looking for that in a camera. And then easy to put back on, just line up the dot tighten it back on. So there you go. The screen on the back is nice. It's like a three inch LCD screen. You can look at it this way or you can flip it around so that you can look at it from the front while you're recording, which is especially nice whenever you're trying to do like vlogging stuff. This really is designed for vlogging, which is what the Sony ZV-1 is designed for as well. Here's a little handheld tripod, which is nice because not only do you get the tripod functionality, 
which is cool, but you also connect it to the HDMI out over here, and then you can hold it like this, you can control it, you've got the buttons on here as well. So one, you've got the little knob so you can control the tightness on the mount so you can adjust that and move it around. And then you've got the buttons here for the shutter and record so you can start filming or you can take pictures while you've got it set up like this, which is nice. And then you can download the Panasonic Lumix app which allows you to connect it and control it remotely from your phone. You can see what the camera sees. You can start recording. That way, if you're in like a remote setting, if you're trying to do stuff, you're a one-man show like I am, you have that level of functionality and control as well. Now, it doesn't do 4K at 60 frames per second, which is a little disappointing. I like to be able to film in 60 frames per second, especially it's 2020. We're on the verge of 2021 here. That would be a really nice feature, but it does do 24 and 30 frames per second. No problem, it does 1080p at 60 frames per second. The built-in uh, spatial audio microphones that are in here are good. It does pretty good at picking up audio. I do like the way that it sounds. Built-in with no extra external microphone needed, so I think that's good. It's not quite as good as the ZV-1, so I'll give Sony the leg up in that department, but for what you get, I think that it works perfectly fine. I also connect my external shotgun microphone to it. You can put other stuff on there as well. So it, there's some, you've got some versatility in that department to control how you want the audio experience to be. Uh, some other things that you need to know about it. Now it does work with the viewfinder, which is pretty nice. It's a digital viewfinder. You just look through it, it pops up on the screen. You see what you would normally see through the LCD screen. One thing you need to know though, if you flip the screen this way and you try to look through it, it doesn't pop up. I guess they assume that you're looking at it this way, but sometimes like when I'm sitting down like this, I have the LCD screen so I can see myself here, but when I'm lining everything up, I like to be able to look through the viewfinder. So I have to look through the viewfinder while it's like this and then flip it around when I get ready to sit down and start recording. But like I said, battery life, you get at least 30 minutes. The other thing that you also need to know about, it has a preset 20 minute recording time. It doesn't overheat. I haven't run into those issues yet, I haven't even changed the time to see if you can change it past the 20 minutes, but I was recording one video one day, and you know, before I get ready to start recording, I'll sit down, I'll hit the button, I may come sit down here in the space I'm at now, start looking at something on the computer, refresh myself before I start recording, and I've already got my camera running, so I don't have to walk back around, or I don't feel like having it up on my phone. 20 minutes, it's built in, it shuts off and goes into standby mode for recording. So I missed like three or four minutes of my recording. I had to turn it on and do it again. So there are some things you can change in here, but overall, I'm really happy with it. It's about $747, $749 without the little tripod hand, uh, hand control kit. If you wanna get it with this kit, you can. Of course, like I said, it comes in my box like this. It was like $799 that way. So it does give you some versatility. I think that this is a really nice add-on if you're looking to get this, just because it gives you an added level of versatility, especially if you're using this as a vlog style camera. But it's very versatile, the autofocus is good, and I think that it's a really good camera. It's like a good all-in-one. If you just do stuff like I'm doing here for YouTube, if you do regular vlogging, content creation, and stuff like that, I think that it's really solid. Now I'm gonna have my full review further down the road as I get more time to use it, but this is like kind of my unboxing first impressions. I've done a couple of videos with it and just my experience with it so far to relay to you in case you're interested in it. And also I think that it's a sharp camera and I think that it would be a really good option for a lot of people, especially in the YouTube world. If you like to do content creation, I think that it's pretty good. They have said that it has like some hunting issues with the autofocus. In a stationary setting like this, I haven't had any problems with it, but as I test it out in the real world, I'll look at that and see if that's gonna be a problem and totally will come back and let you know about it. But so far, I like it. I think that Panasonic has done an excellent job with this. For what you pay for it, what you get, and the versatility and the 4K, I think that it's a solid option to consider if you're looking to get something like this or the ZV-1. There are differences, like I said, this one, it doesn't have the overheating issues like the ZV-1, it doesn't have the battery issues like the ZV-1, it also has the interchangeable lenses, which also gives you more versatility. So, pretty cool, and that's all I've got for this video. So, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section, I'll get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button, and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you guys next time.